hi and welcome back to the channel today i'm going to be doing a cook with me demonstration of how i test out a recipe today we are making zucchini meatballs <laughs> actually get started on our zucchini meatless balls um, I like to always give you guys extra content so I am actually eating lunch and then I'm gonna lay the babies down and then I'm gonna be doing the recording for the um, meatless zucchini balls um, so I figured I'd share with you guys what I'm having for lunch because you know it's a quick um, plant-based meal so here is what I'm having for lunch I have some black bean burgers. I just get these at Aldi's. They do have canola oil in them, so I'm not like super impressed. But I also have not grocery shopped, so I'm not like loaded with veggies right now. Just some frozen mixed vegetables. And then I added a little bit of this roasted blend on here. This brand is really good. I love their mixes. They have some really interesting flavors, so I really like that. So I'm steaming that up and I really wanted a salad, but I have no lettuce, no spinach, nothing. But I did have these Brussels sprouts. So what I did is I just shredded them up and I'm gonna use this as the base of my salad. And for my dressing, I wanted something kind of creamy, um, but I obviously don't have any cashews, cream sauce right now because I have nothing. So I have this tahini and all I'm gonna do, because this is really thick, you have to thin this out. So what I'm gonna do to thin this out, because I don't have lemons, <laughs> is I'm actually gonna take, these are just some homemade pickles that my brother made. They have garlic, um, some fresh dill. He actually put some tomatoes in there too and then some garden cucumbers and vinegar. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of the vinegar from this and thin it out, thin out my tahini. And that's gonna make it a nice acidity, um, a nice creaminess, and that's gonna go really well with this and then to top on top of this salad, I actually have a few tomatoes of my own harvest. So I'm gonna just put those right on top with a little bit more dressing, and that is gonna be our lunch. dressing I did end up adding a little bit of maple syrup as well as some salt because the one that I have um, is unsweetened and salt free I I'm not sure if you guys have a different brand the one that I used this time I just ordered off of Amazon it's called organic once again um, but I don't tahini for me has always been very like almost bitter and I'm not sure if it's like just naturally like that and, and some of them have sweeten, sweeteners and salt in them. Um, but if you have another recommendation of a different tahini brand and maybe I can try something a little bit different, let me know in the comments below. The first thing that I'm going to do is I kind of have my prep station already ready. This is called your mise en place. You want to have all your stuff prepped and ready so that you're not in the middle of cooking something and then kind of like scatterbrained. So the first thing that I'm going to do for this recipe um, is I'm going to actually just grate some zucchini. And I'm grating these and then I'm going to put a little bit of salt on them. And the reason I am putting salt on them is because I have this fear that when I go to bake these in the oven, they're just gonna like stay soggy and wet. And in order to 
keeps them from doing that. If you will put a little bit of salt, it draws out a lot of the natural moisture. And then what we'll do is we'll just take a cheesecloth or I'll use, I think I'm gonna use one of my bread towels and we're gonna squeeze out all the extra moisture because you really don't want a soggy meatball. So, or not meat meatball. All right, so now don't overthink this process about adding the salt because all you're doing is trying to get some of the moisture out. Um, so when you're seasoning this, you don't have to go super heavy. You just want it seasoned to like if you were gonna eat it, like if you're tossing like a, a salad or something like that. Um, so you're just adding just a little bit of salt on all of them. You don't have to go crazy. I'm just gonna go set this over here at the sink and let the extra liquid drain off. And then when we're ready for this, we will go ahead and drain the rest also right now i'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven so that's ready i'm going to get my oven to like 400 because i really want the outsides of these to like really kind of char up a little bit and that's not going to happen if i do it at a lower heat because i'm not going to add a lot of oil and there's not a lot of fat in this so let's, let me get this going another thing that is a all around tip for cooking in general is to keep your workspace cleaned up. So now that I'm done that, I'm gonna kind of straighten up my workspace before I move on to the next step. That way I don't get overwhelmed all at once. And another thing is to keep a bucket for all your compost and then I keep another one just for like actual trash. That way I'm not running around the kitchen the whole time. All right, so the next step I'm gonna do is I just have a can of garbanzo beans. Um, I'm using the, this because I really want to add like a little bit of extra protein in there as well as more of like a meatiness, um, more of a bite to the recipe versus, cause zucchini, when it's gonna cook, it's gonna be really soft. So I want like a little bit more of like a bite to it. So I'm gonna strain these off and I'm also gonna rinse them and then I'm gonna mash them. Okay, and this is where my recipe is gonna vary because all the recipes that I saw, you actually process this in a food processor, but I'm not gonna do that because every time I do that, it ends up too mushy to me. So I'm gonna just take a potato masher and I'm just gonna mash this to like the consistency of, um, I have no idea of what consistency. I don't really know how to explain this to you, but I'm just gonna mash it up a little bit. You don't want huge balls of the beans in here, but you also don't want it to be like hummus. That's another thing I have a fear of when you don't use egg in a recipe, which we're not using. A lot of times it doesn't have anything to kind of bind it together and so they get really like flaky. And these might do that, I have no idea. And if they do, I'm gonna flake them over my salad, I don't know. So this is the consistency that you're looking for. It is not like overly mushed. Um, you do still have a few chunks. The next thing I'm gonna go ahead and make is a flax egg and all this essentially is is um, ground flax seed with water. So it's a tablespoon of ground flax seed and a, two tablespoons of water and this is gonna help with binding everything together. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that. I always keep um, some, I'll take and grind up some flax seed and just put it in a jar so if I need, really this is the only thing I really need pre-ground for because other than that I put it in smoothies or if I put this on a salad but anyway, I will go ahead and put this in here. Let's see, maybe I'll do two. No, that might be too wet, just one. We'll just do one. And two tablespoons of water. One tablespoon of flaxseed, two tablespoons of water. If I really would have been smart, I would have kept my zucchini draining, the juices draining over a bowl, and I could have used that instead of water. But, you know, I didn't think that far ahead. The next thing we're gonna do is just chop up some parsley. I keep all my herbs, I just put them in a cup, put some water in the cup, and then you just take something and tent them, and they'll literally stay fresh for like two weeks. With cilantro, I actually use the stems as well, but parsley is a little bit more tough, so I actually don't use the stems for parsley unless I'm like, unless I'm making a soup or something, and then I can just throw them in. Parsley. Parsley is very traditional to meatballs. Oh, since we're not putting Parmesan cheese, we should put some um, nutritional yeast. Yes, we're gonna add that. I just thought of that. Let me write that down. You really wanna chop this really fine. Or you can just use dried parsley, but I really prefer the fresh parsley. It adds like a lot more flavor. 
parsley's done. The next thing we're gonna do is garlic. I have that somewhere right here. So the easiest way I have found to get in garlic really fine for like recipes like this where I want it, I don't wanna bite into like a big chunk of garlic is I'm actually gonna just use a, um, a grater. Like a, it's a fine, like a fine grater. So I don't know how many pieces I'm gonna put yet. We'll do, oh, I'm dropping them four. We'll do three, we'll do four. All right, so I'm literally just gonna take this and grate it right into my bowl and try not to get my fingers in there. This is gonna make it so fine. And the more you break down like the cell wall to the um, whatever vegetables you're using, the more the flavors are equally distributed and you actually get the most nutrients when you, um, when you shred something or blend it, whatever, you get a ton more of the nutrients that way. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add my oats too. I'm just using quick cook rolled oats. These ones are already, because they're the quick cook, they're already kind of ground up a little bit. Um, and I did think about grinding them more, but at the same time, like I said before, I kind of want more of like a chewier texture. Let's get the zucchini and then we will put that in here and we should be ready to mix up and assemble. This is just a like bread towel and I'm just gonna use this and strain all the extra um, liquid off. All right, we are back with our zucchini and it is all dry. I did not save the liquid like an idiot. I should have saved that liquid for something. Anyway, so now I'm just gonna add all this back into this mixture. And now our, all we have left to do really is to season and make little balls out of it. And then we will go from there. So this is what the flax egg turned into. You can see it's like really thick. And all this is going to do and act like is just a binding agent within everything. Also, this is what our mix looks like so far. We have the parsley in there. We shredded in some garlic. We drained off all of the zucchini. We have some oats in here. And this is how the texture of the oats. Remember I was telling you they're not the whole oats. I'm now adding in my flax egg. And then we'll give that all a mix. I am gonna add a little bit of avocado oil because there's absolutely no fat in this and I need some fat for when I actually roast them in the oven. I'd want them to get a little bit crispy on the outside and that's not gonna happen without fat. Plus the olive oil will help, help moisten everything as well. So I'm going to put maybe two tablespoons. There's one, two. So two tablespoons of olive oil. Italian. Not a lot, a tiny bit of smoked paprika. I'm really not trying to go crazy with this. Just want a little bit of something that's gonna make you go, what is that? And then a little bit of cayenne because there's that balance of heat. Also, I can't put too much of that because I want my kids to eat this. They're probably not. All y'all that think my kids eat healthy, they don't. They eat as healthy as I can get them. They drink a smoothie every morning that has greens in it and all fruits and things healthy, but that's it. All right, this looks good. So now we will clean up again and then get ready to measure them out. And my oven is preheated and we will throw them in the oven. Mess is cleaned up and I came back to my stuff and now it's a little bit too wet. <laughs> when I used to bake bread all the time, I have wheat gluten and wheat gl gluten has a lot of iron as well as protein. Um, and selenium in it. So I'm gonna use this. Most people aren't gonna have this, so I'm not gonna say that this needs to be part of the recipe, but because my mixture is a little wet, I have to add this. You could add, you could actually add um, a little bit of flour or almond flour, just something to kind of thicken it a little bit at this point. And also what I forgot to show you and forgot to actually add was um, the nutritional yeast. I have not added that yet. So I'm going to add that as well, and that'll help absorb some moisture. And then the last thing I'm gonna add, this is getting, might be a little intense, but it's gonna be great, um, is I actually just take cashews and grind them up with nutritional yeast, garlic powder, and salt, and make like this um, cashew cheese. And um, I'm gonna add a little bit of that too, not a lot because 
I don't need all the extra fat from the cashews. But yeah, so this should dry it up enough and then we will form the balls and throw them in the oven. A recipe isn't gonna tell you exactly what it should feel like or whatever, so, or what you like. So you have to kind of just go with it and just keep trying until you get what you want. So anyway, that is done now. And I'm gonna use this um, silicone mat. If you do not have a silicone mat, get one. They're like seven bucks. The best investment you'll ever make because it reduces the amount of oil. I won't have to put any oil on here even though we only have like two tablespoons of oil in our actual um, meatball mix. I won't have to put oil on here and they shouldn't stick with this. Or you could use um, wax paper, I meant parchment paper, not wax paper, parchment paper or something like that as well it would work fine. But these are reusable, you can throw them on the grill, you can bake with it, you can do anything with them. To make everything more uniform size, I'm just gonna use this um, little cookie thing. That way everything's more consistent. And I don't know, when it's consistent, it just looks professional. So I'm gonna get all these rolled out and then we will throw them in the oven. All right, this is what they look like. I was originally making them all into perfectly round balls, but then I realized that these little bits and pieces that are hanging off will probably crisp up faster and be really delicious. So I'm just gonna leave them like that. And I will throw these in the oven. I'm not gonna give you a time yet because I don't know how long. I'm gonna start at like 20 minutes and then work from there because they are pretty moist and I'm scared I'm gonna end up having to let them stay in there for a while. All right, this is the end result. I just took them out of the oven. Want one? Here. Okay. I think it was a really great idea to leave them kind of like misshapen because it really created like a crunchy like layer. They smell really good. They look really good. They look really crunchy and delicious. You want another one? Here. Okay, obviously they're Daisy approved. <laughs> Of, um, good morning. Uh -uh. It kind of reminds me of pizza crust or pizza, like I guess from the Italian seasoning. It's not too wet on the inside, it's holding together really good. I really think when these are um, mixed with like a marinara, too, they'll be even better. I don't know. That was a win to me. I would make these again. Yeah, for sure. So now that my veggie balls are done, I'm gonna just throw together a quick marinara. Well, sauce. I'm gonna use a can of diced tomatoes and I'm gonna use this organic marinara sauce. And I'm just gonna sweat down some onions. And that's it. Throw the meatballs in. And that's gonna be dinner tonight. If you have any questions about the recipe feel free to leave them in the comments below or you can message me on Instagram if you get right if you're in the middle of making it and you have a question message me on Instagram and I can respond to you like pretty quick <laughs> this is the meatball set. who's that right here who's that right there right there right there <gasps> say bye see you next Wednesday